Well, good morning and welcome. Um, I actually always have cards with me. I brought some cards, but these are my note cards. Um, all right. <laughs> And I'm going to be talking about the future of automotive connectivity. And Alan Kay, uh, one of the geniuses in our industry, uh, has said that the best way to predict the future is to, is to design it. And so this is all about thinking about the future and the challenging questions that it poses, and then how do we design solutions that are going to work for us. So the first thing I want to talk about is I met a strategist at the Department of Defense some years back who said they know that in the future every single physical thing will have an IP address, and there will be unlimited bandwidth. And so the fundamental question is, how do you deal with the command and control structure, and how do people make decisions out in the field of duty in, in such an instantaneous world? Can, can the existing structure work? And as I was thinking about it, you know, today, there are more things that will have IP addresses, or I may even need to be thinking about IP addresses in a different way. I think data will have an address, metadata, electricity, energy, even the interactions from social media networks are going to have these notions of IP addresses and uh, the bandwidth will be ubiquitous. One of the things that's, that's key is, uh, as we look at uh, how we get from here to there, when I was talking with one of the folks who was involved in the ARPANET internet days, he said that one of the guiding principles they used to help in the decision process for the internet was the US Constitution. And I found that really fascinating about the whole checks and balance process. And as this ubiquity of information, as all of this data makes its way into the cloud, how do we govern that process? And so as a simple example, we know about traffic services. Uh, today, you can get traffic information, and you take a risk if you're going to make a decision and change your course of action as a result of that. And so if we wanted to design a traffic service that was actually really highly relevant, you know, how do we deal with that? It's all about personal relevance for me right now without having to think about the mass of data that's out there. But as we think about connectivity, we think about the evolution of connectivity. And it started off with person-to-person -person connectivity, with um, Morse code and telegraphs and telephones. Um, and then it moved to person to machine, such as garage door openers, remote controls, GPS devices. And then the next obvious thing is machine to machine communications. And you, know, you think about the toll road processing that goes on when you drive by the toll road with the automatic system. Um, even in the future, we may actually have your grave marker be sending information to other grave markers, to other families for a different kind of social network situation. So who knows where it's headed? But the fundamental thing is today in the machine to machine world, Humans write the rules. Humans decide how those interactions are going to work. But at some point, with the ubiquitous nature of this information, with this vast connectivity, with all this extra information in the cloud, people won't be able to keep up with all that, and machines are going to start writing the code. What is the equivalent set of governing principles that the US Constitution does for us to govern us? How do we deal with that? That raises questions about privacy. It raises questions about how do you define relevance and, and human intent. Now, when you look at the primary task of getting from point A to point B in a vehicle, it's about getting there safely. And the industry um, spends a tremendous amount of time looking at human factors, looking at people's eye tracking movements, what kind of distractions are there going to be. A tremendous amount of energy goes into focusing on what are the right technologies to bring to bear on this situation. Um, but the, the real fundamental challenge is, you know, how do we change the framework from driver distraction, which really focuses on those peak cognitive load requirements, to one of greater situational awareness, where the whole cognitive curve comes down significantly. How do we bring technology to bear on that? Today, a lot of folks are focusing on voice-based recognition solutions so that you can browse your uh, media player, uh, do hands-free phone calls, get directions, even browse the internet via voice. And all those things will be helpful. The issue is that it's a different technology that's brought into the vehicle. And so I think that one of the fundamental things is that the answer lies in social media tools. It's an unintuitive thing that we're being able to connect in this space. Um, let me tell you a story about um, that happened recently to me. Um, and it's based upon this notion of information being pushed to the cloud from embedded connectivity in vehicles. One of our engineers, Steve, uh, told me one day, he says, Nick, I'm doing something for your car tomorrow. And I said, what is it? And he says, I'm not telling you. Okay, so the next day came and went. I really didn't notice anything different. I called him the next day and I said, did you do whatever you were going to do? He says, yes, we did. Did you notice? I said, no. He says, pay attention. Okay. So two days later, I realized when I turned the car on, I heard this bad advertising to content cut on a radio station. And then I, sort of in the back of my mind, I realized, you know, I think I experienced that the other day, but I was on the cell phone call. So I turned the car off, turned it back on again, and I realized that it was tweeting. The car was actually chirping. Turned it off, turned it back on. It was distinct. Chirp, chirp, tweet, tweet. And actually the instrument cluster said tweet, tweet, tweet. 
So I picked up my phone, I called Steve, I said, Steve, what's going on? He says, your car's tweeting, isn't that cool? And I said, well, what's it tweeting? He says, it's, it's tweeting your location. And I said, who's following me? <laughs> and he said, uh, he says, nobody, you got, we get a private account and your car's tweeting. Every time you turn it on, it tweets location. Every time you turn it off, it tweets location. And I said, okay, well, I'd like to follow myself. He said, well, you have to give permission to us first so that you can follow yourself. And the whole privacy got really esoteric and got really surreal. But I've been, I've been tweeting, I've been following myself. Some interesting things happened. Um, this happened back in July. I noticed some of the, some of the entries said, uh, made at home. I thought, okay, that's kind of cool. Another one said, made it to work. Another one got cute, said, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. So the engineers have some creative juices that are coming out. And so um, I, I called Steve. I said, so Steve, did you put my home address and my work address in there so that it can be creative? He says, nope, it figured it out. I said, ooh, is it cool, creepy? Not sure which it is exactly. Um, but I want to show you one that really got interesting. Here's one that started 12.15 p.m. on a Sunday, August 8th. It says, started driving. I think I'm going to Our Lady of Sorrows Church. And then a little bit later, stopped at Our Lady of Sorrows Church. So the car knew, based upon some prior behavior, that when I turned it on at that particular time on a Sunday, we're headed to church. And so this asks, raises all kinds of interesting questions, but what's really intriguing for me is this opens up the possibility of my intent being sorted out by some, by some machine. And if that intent can then be used to bring greater relevance to my life, what can we do with that stuff? So we think about uh, these, these technologies. If you look at electric vehicles and how they're connected, um, it raises a question about, I can now better manage my, my charging cost by letting the car sort out when it should actually charge as opposed to me having to set some rules on some website or some, on some smartphone app. Um, and in the future, when I have excess energy in my battery, we'll be able to push that energy back into the grid. But I'd love for my vehicle to sync up with the data on my Google Calendar so that it knows what my schedule is to know whether or not I can afford to give the extra energy back to the grid or whether I need that later on. I don't want to have to think about that stuff. I would like it to think on my behalf, but in a way that serves me well. And so this is all about some personal benefits from this intent engine um, existing and working. The question is, how does this benefit all of us? And I think what's interesting is just like when I turn my car on um, late at night uh, after a late, late, late time in the office, it knows how much energy I have um, on my battery stored. It knows roughly when I'm going to be home. It actually knows that I'm headed home. And it knows what transformer my vehicle is associated with from the charging cycle. And if there's a sufficient number of people in my neighborhood that are going to all be charging at the exact same time on that transformer, it should alert the utility so that they can decide whether that's important to them or not. And if it's important to them, they can be prepared to get more capacity online and even schedule some renewable energy in, instead of the traditional energy. And so what's intriguing is that the collective data that can reside in this virtual instance of the real world up in the cloud have the appropriate applications hitting that and doing things on our behalf. Now, this, uh, this future is actually happening now. Uh, in just three days, the Chevy Volt is going to be hitting production. Now, I've had the, the privilege of driving one for about five weeks now, and I'm happy to report that I've driven 2,400 miles and only used four gallons of gasoline, so that's, that's doing pretty good. Um, but the way it works is uh, it's got a, a battery that can give you a, um, a range, and then if you need more range, a little generator kicks on, and it, it provides energy. Um, but what's interesting is we've got a, a mobile application, and I actually have it on my, on my Android phone here, and um, I can control all the different uh, things about my vehicle that's back in Detroit right now from right here. It's, it's a nice remote control. Um, but one of the... I think what started off as a cute application or a cute uh, little service is one that's uh, an example of how the vehicle cares for me. Um, I've got a setting, a notification setting on this app that says I set it for 10 o'clock p.m. So if at 10 o'clock p.m. my car is not plugged in, it sends me a text message and says, please plug me in. So I don't have to worry about if I remember to plug it in. I don't have to worry about if my kids or family took the car, brought it home, didn't plug it in. The car cares enough to let me know. Now, the car doesn't really care, but the human design process here of understanding what our relevant intent is cares enough to make this thing work for me. So um, the nice thing is that there's no compromise in these kinds of solutions. And you know, I'm really happy to say that we're on the cusp of something really big here. Um, you know, I don't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. Uh, I have no doubt that 
um, there's something profoundly important here in being able to sort out individual intent, um, community values, so that we individually benefit each of us, and then we benefit all of us as a community because we can leverage this information to do the right things. It raises all kinds of questions about privacy. It raises all kinds of questions about intent management. But these are things I think we can solve because they're important to solve. Um, the, uh, you know, this ubiquitous connectivity is going to have a change on the basic structure of how we interact. And the exciting thing is, is that there's going to be new kinds of mashups that are occurring in this space. The mashup of data, the mashup of energy, the mashup of the social interactions to generate the real kind of understanding of our human intent so that we can bring relevant solutions to the people when they need it most. Thank you.